In this video, I want to talk about the shocking departure of Jason Blundell from Deviation Games. So as you know, Jason Blundell left Treyarch during Black Ops 4, and he went on to start his own gaming studio with Dave Anthony, who also was previously at Treyarch. Their goal with the studio was to deviate from the norm and do something different and unique within the gaming sphere. As they felt like previously, they were too creatively limited, I guess working on Call of Duty under a big publisher like Activision. So it comes as a massive shock with Jason Blundell abruptly leaving Treyarch, starting a brand new studio, it seemed like everything was on the up for him, and then he again abruptly has left Deviation Games. They issued this statement last night, saying Deviation Games is announcing that Jason Blundell has left the studio. We appreciate the contributions Jason has made, and we wish him the best in his future endeavours. Deviation will continue to be led by CEO Dave Anthony, who also assumes that the role of game director this past year and remains a guiding force as we look ahead. We are excited to announce that Louis Castle has joined Deviation Games as Senior Vice President of Development, a video game industry veteran. With two Lifetime Achievement Awards, Louis co-founded Westwood Studios, best known for creating the legendary Command & Conquer franchise. Louis is joined by an incredible roster of industry veterans who recently joined the studio, including God of War, alumni Jonathan Hawkins and Dean Reimer, and Call of Duty Black Ops guru Tony Tony Flame. Yes, this was actually found out a few months ago on Tony Flame's LinkedIn profile. Of course, he was heading multiplayer for Treyarch, I believe. I believe he even did some work on Cold War Zombies. But yeah, people figured out a few months ago from his LinkedIn that he had left Treyarch and joined Deviation Games. Following this statement about Jason Blundell leaving, he did officially announce it on Twitter too. Deviation Games has a lot of ex-Call of Duty developers, mostly from Treyarch. Anyways, Deviation went on to say this plethora of talent makes Deviation uniquely equipped to continue leading the ever-evolving games industry into the future, including with the continued development of our previously unannounced, groundbreaking AAA original IP. Whilst Deviation have yet to confirm what their game is, according to rumours it's planned to be a world-class first-person shooter to be supported for multiple years, if not generations. The project will receive many game modes, including heavy story-driven single-player campaigns and multiplayer aimed both for arcade modes and competitive ones. The project is ambitious, but is in the early stages of production, so things could change a few more times. And it is rumoured that at least part of the campaign may actually be set in Mars. So yeah, this is a very ambitious project, and we know that Sony are backing the project and are funding it. It is unclear as to whether it's going to be a PlayStation exclusive, or whether Sony do actually plan to buy the studio. Before I continue with the rest of what I want to discuss, I just have a quick message to share for you. This video has been kindly sponsored by PUBG Mobile, which I'm sure you've heard of before, as it's one of the most popular free-to-play battle royale games in the world, with 50 million active daily players and more than 1 billion downloads in total. Enjoy the authentic battle royale experience in fast-paced action while playing alone, in duos, or playing with your squad. The game has regular collaborations with the top IPs, such as Spider-Man No Way Home, Jujutsu Kaisen, Baby Shark, Evangelion, and the boys from Amazon, and even brands such as Lamborghini or celebrities like black pink. This means there are really cool skins and outfits from your favourite franchises to customise your characters and weapons. An awesome new game mode has just become available called Ancient Secrets Arise, played on Arangel, Miramar and Livig maps between July 11th and September 12th. Jump in the battleground and explore the mysteries of the Ancient Secrets. In this new mode, a path highlighted by a golden colour will be visible during every match, with the Legend of Temple visible at its starting point. Further down the path, multiple portals open up as the temple moves closer. Players can enter the temple via one of these portals. Once in the temple, players will gain access to a massive amount of loot, but only if they are able to beat its guardians. The mode has a bunch of awesome features, such as the sandstorm zone, a lot of supplies are available, and get the mysterious scarab charm. That gives you a second chance to get the winner winner chicken dinner. Then we have the emperor temple, be prepared to defeat the pharaoh to get some surprises, and the scarab and jackal ruins, solve the puzzles on the ruins, fight the mummy warriors, the guardian beast, and find the treasure. A Amongst a bunch more awesome features, so if you want to check out PUBG Mobile, click the link in the description and discover Ancient Secrets Arises, various mysteries, either alone or with your friends. But here's the thing, since the announcement of Jason Blundell leaving, a lot of people have been speculating that he is going back to Treyarch and is going to be working on trying to save zombies or whatever the hell that means, and I just want to say, that is not happening. Jason Blundell, I highly doubt, is going back to zombies or anything related to Call of Duty. 
Lucy. The reason why he left in the first place was due to creative differences and constraints, and he wanted to escape that with Deviation Games. He wouldn't leave to create his new studio and then just go right back to where he was before. I don't know why this is even being speculated, of course this isn't going to be the case, and JC Backfire, who is of course the community manager for Deviation Games, released his own statement saying, to be honest with you, I'm in the same boat as you, still processing it. Game development is wild, but I'm going to keep doing my thing and to help build something that will make the community proud. I love you all. Judging from his statement that game development is wild, I'm going to assume that the reason why Jason has left has something to do with the development process at Deviation Games, whether that be creative differences, or maybe it could be something to do with the game being too ambitious, which was what happened to Black Ops 3 and 4's campaign, which Jason Blundell of course directed, and they were very messy behind the scenes in development. Game development is of course hard after all, and maybe something related to that could be why Jason is leaving, or potentially Sony are demanding too much pressure from Deviation Games, and that is why Jason is leaving, especially since Sony are fearing losing Call of Duty in the future with Microsoft buying Activision. They might be trying to crack down on Deviation, maybe he could be leaving because Sony are trying to purchase Deviation and Jason just doesn't want to be a part of that. Other people are speculating that maybe Jason got a dream job offer from elsewhere with really good pay and creative control, but again, I think that is unlikely because he was literally one of the heads of Deviation Games. There was not really a better opportunity than this. This surely is the best possible outcome for any developer. And like I said, judging from JC's tweet with the fact that he said game development is wild, this is the sentiment that pretty much all developers express. With game development being all over the place, things can just change in an instant, things can go wrong, and I'm assuming that might be part of the reason as to why Jason has left. And I saw this tweet last night, and I want to stress before I get into this that this is not confirmed, so take it with a grain of salt as always. But according to this tweet, Deviation Games has lost its CCO and founder Jason Blundell, which we obviously just talked about, but according to a senior games artist, the studio is apparently seeing a mass exodus and the studio is a revolving door. Apparently, a lot of developers are leaving not just Jason Blundell, which could be suggesting that something is going wrong behind the scenes in development. But again, this is just a rumour and is just hearsay, so don't take this as fact. Like I said earlier, maybe this has something to do with Sony overstepping and not giving Deviation Games full creative control. Maybe they're trying to rush out the product way sooner than is going to be able to be fulfilled. And like I said, whatever this new IP that Deviation Games are working on, it seems really ambitious. And if it is really ambitious, they're going to need the time to make whatever they are producing. And maybe Sony want it released by a certain date that they are probably just not going to be able to keep up with. So yeah, I highly doubt Jason Blundell is going back to Treyarch. I don't know what he is going to do from here, but I wish him the best of luck, of course. So now what I want to talk about is the sentiment that has sparked on Twitter, where everyone is pretty much saying that Jason Blundell is pretty much the sole contributor to Zombies being such a big success in Black Ops 2, Black Ops 3, and I guess it trickled off in Black Ops 4, but let's forget about that game. Game development is a big collaborative effort from a range of different people, each contributing different elements to the game. Yes, Jason Blundell obviously played an important role in those games. I see a lot of people acting like Jason is some sort of god with insane powers and acting like zombies can never be what it once was without Blundell. And I feel like this idealization is harmful, not just with how people are doing it to Jason Blundell, but tons of other figureheads and celebrities. A lot of people create idealized versions of them in their heads where they're pretty much perfect, incapable of faults. Zombies' past success was not just because of Jason Blundell. Even in interviews that he would do, he would say that all the credit shouldn't be going to him because it was all of the men and women at Treyarch working relentlessly to make the product what it was. Just to reiterate really, a big thanks to all the people at Treyarch who worked incredibly hard to make this possible. No one is erasing the impacts that Blundell had, but you have to look at what he himself has said. Even if Jason Blundell was to come back to Treyarch, do you think it's just magically going to make the game what you want it to be? No, of course not. Jason Blundell was not the sole contributor to Zombies' past successes and also failures. And the thing is, when talking about success and failure, these measures are entirely ambiguous, subjective, and rude rudimentary. Success and failures are determined differently by different people depending on who you talk to. And game development is a massive chain of events with things going correctly and wrong. The best games could be made under terrible conditions. 
some really bad games could be made under the best conditions possible. Sometimes we don't know how things play out. Even in a room with a bunch of good developers, maybe they just don't work together. Maybe they don't gel well together. For example, Deviation Games has put together a team of a ton of veterans within gaming. Of course, we don't know anything about what the game's going to be, but let's just say the game ends up turning out really poorly. It doesn't mean that any of the developers were lazy or they didn't know what they were doing, but maybe things just didn't pan out well. And that could be down to a numerous amount of factors. It won't ever be just because of one person. For example, if we look at the failures of Black Ops 3's and 4's campaigns, are we supposed to put all of the blame on these due to Jason Blundell because he directed these projects? But of course, we shouldn't put all of the blame on him. He wasn't the only one working on these projects that were too ambitious. And just as we shouldn't put all of the blame on the failures of those campaigns to Blundell, we also shouldn't put all of the success on Jason Blundell for zombies. Even the community manager for Treyarch has been pretty much saying the exact same thing on Twitter. A lot of people are acting like after Jason Blundell left, zombies just went downhill and it's entirely because of Blundell leaving, but they're forgetting the fact that a lot of people didn't like Black Ops 4 zombies. The community was extremely toxic during that game and that was whilst Jason Blundell was there. And leading on from Black Ops 4, Jason Blundell just left Treyarch, so clearly he wasn't happy there, aside from the fact that the campaign got cancelled for that game. So already the sentiment wasn't good surrounding zombies back then, and I think with Black Ops Cold War, Treyarch developed the zombies in that game under a much shorter time period than they had with Black Ops 3 and 4, and yet I still think they did extremely well at rejuvenating the zombies community. Yes, Vanguard Zombies has been a disaster and has lacked a direction, but again, I don't think that was due to faults of Treyarch or Jason Blundell not being at the studio, it was because I feel like Activision forced a very small team to work on Vanguard Zombies in a very short time period with not much resources under extreme scrutiny and that's probably why Vanguard Zombies has turned out the way it was, not because Blundell wasn't there. Together as a team, the talented and passionate developers at Treyarch have made games that are special. One person didn't make or break those games. It has been a massive collaborative effort. So yeah, I think people need to cut Treyarch some slack, even if you are not happy with the current state of zombies. Even if you didn't like Cold War Zombies, which I personally love, I'm not a fan of Vanguard Zombies, I don't think anyone is though. You have to understand that the developers are trying their best and hopefully zombies will have a big comeback in COD 2024, but whether that happens or not will not just be because of one person, it'll be because of multiple people working hard together and there is just a massive element of luck involved too. Sometimes things just play out well and sometimes conditions are better too. Like I said, the last couple Call of Duty games have been made in much shorter time periods than the prior zombies installments. Anyways, thank you for watching the video and make sure to subscribe if not for latest and greatest Call of Duty news and information. So anyways, thank you for watching and uh, bye.